This is part two to the Sony KDL 37 XBR6. This applies to all the Sony XBR6 series and many other televisions. Uh, this set we diagnosed in part one that I had a failed gamma correction uh, IC on the timing controller. And on this video, I'm gonna show you how to change that timing controller chip using nothing more than a soldering iron. And that's it. No hot air station, no special tools. I've got this Sony Bravia XBR TV here and as you can see it has a really shitty picture. Or as you can see the picture is completely washed out. Unwatchable. So that's what uh, we're up against on this one. Okay the part came in to replace the gamma controller chip here on this timing controller board for the Sony. So we're going to uh, change the chip in this video. I'm just waiting for my equipment here to warm up and then uh, we'll tackle taking out this dead controller and replacing it with a new one. Now I know I'm gonna hear from everybody out here that's got an opinion because opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one. Everybody's gonna give me the opinion of how I should remove this IC. And if I had a hot air station I would use a hot air station but I don't have a hot air station and most people don't. Now, a hot air station is definitely needed if you were taking out something like a BGA chip, something like one of these here, which my camera is probably not gonna focus on. But to take out these flat pack ICs, like this one over here, what we did in the service business is we used the simplest of tools, a razor blade, and we just cut the cut the, uh, carefully cut the pins off. I don't know if this one's sharp or not. You need a sharp one to do this, but we carefully cut the pins. And then, once the pins are cut, Exacto knife works good too. Once the pins are cut, we can just lift the chip off and then use our iron and remove the individual pins. This blade is probably dull. Because I've done a few of them. I've done a few of these chips with this blade. There we go. We're through on that side completely. And we're through on this side. See, these chips will never ever be reused. This one's shot anyway, but you'll never ever put one of these back in, ever. So you don't have to worry about cutting off the pins. We just want to get it off the board cleanly without uh, causing any stress to the board. And I don't want to use a, 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 like a, a heat gun or anything because that doesn't control the air and I'd end up melting the solder and blowing other parts away. So we just very carefully cut the pins and then the chip will lift away once I've got them all cut. I think I've got it now. Sometimes these chips are glued down too so you have to kind of pop them all away. And there's my chip. There we go, the old chip is done. Now I can prep the board, put some flex on there, use my iron to clean up any of the, uh, and get all the old pins off here. So 
We'll just take our soldering iron and we'll just rake it over the pins and lift them off. And don't do that, by the way, with your fingers. You'll burn yourself. Just because I do it. As I've explained to you guys many times, I don't have much feeling left in my fingers from hot pulling out hot tubes. So when I when I do this. Yes, okay, I'm burning my fingers, but it doesn't hurt. Okay, now that I've got the pins off, I'm going to get all the old pieces of pins off here. Then I'm going to flex the board and put some fresh solder down. Make sure that there's no traces of the old pins left. So now we'll get some flux and we'll flux the board. Get it prepped for the new IC, set the new IC in place and uh, solder it down. you guys can see what I'm doing because I'm I'm looking through some pretty powerful magnifiers here besides having these uh, having this hood on that gives me magnifiers I'm, not, I'm also wearing uh, my wife's plus 2.5 because reading glasses because she's blind as a bat so I've got the uh, I've got the magnifiers put into their full power ah, and I got some dirt on here I gotta clean up So with these things, I can't see more than about about three inches in front of my nose. I mean, they're really, really powerful. But I can see every, I can see any bridges whatsoever here.
that's too close for the camera to focus or not. But anyway, there's our there's our prepped area, ready to mount the new IC. Now I know a few people out there are going to probably say that this technique is barbaric and why don't I invest in a hot air station the whole nine yards and quite frankly you're saying you're entitled to your opinions um, the reason I haven't invested in a hot air station is because I don't change enough of these things I'm not doing this for a living I'm not doing this full-time and back when I was doing this full-time was which was before BGA chips actually hit the market but we did a lot of flat pack and this is a small one this is only a 48 pin I did some that had 200 pins on them and this is the way we learned in the field this was actually this was actually a, a method that was taught by Sony of all places no I got this experience using the razor blade actually use an exacto knife but same thing it's a razor blade um, cut and and pick this was how we did it in the service centers when we didn't have a hot air station because at the time this is going back into the you know the early 80s 84 85 86 when when stuff that used these flat pack ICs was uh, hitting the market uh, air stations were ridiculously expensive uh, an air station would set you back five or six thousand dollars for an air station then you had to buy all the tools that, and they basically had a square head that was exact size and you'd hold it right over top of the pins and it would, you know, it wasn't just one that you just blew on the pins. It, they, they actually had uh, jigs. Nobody bought them because they were just ridiculously expensive. And we all learned how to change these ICs this way. And I've changed literally hundreds of ICs this way. So you might not like it. It might not be pretty, but this technique works, and you don't need any special tools to do it. And that's why I chose to change this IC this way on the video because everybody else is using a hot air station to do it and I'm just showing you that guys you don't need a hot air station to uh, change these ICs you can do it every bit as effectively without them We're going to line this up, get the pins lined up. I'm going to tack down just one side so that I can check my alignment and then I will go through and do the rest. This is the hardest part is getting these pins lined up. And of course, get in the orientation. The dot is in this corner here, the little, the little white mark. There's a dot in this corner to indicate the orientation.
here. I think I got it. Okay, we'll tack one pin. One corner pin down so I can just verify everything here. Well, I got two of them together. I bridged them. <laughs> Let's put some flex on there, and then we'll get there. We'll clean the rest of them up while I'm doing while I'm doing that. At least they're not going to move. And I still got to get that one bridge taken care of. For that we'll use wick. See if we can draw the solder away from those two pins. Very carefully. We dip the uh, wick in the rosin so that it uh, makes the copper cleaner and more attractive to draw that little bit of it's just it's just a one little speck we got to get it off there Pretty sure I got it. I'm just double check here with the big the big scope. And I got it. Yes. Yeah, I got it. 
gonna clean the board up here and with some isopropanol I want to clean it up and make sure that there's nothing bridging here I know you guys probably can't see it on camera that well but anyway we're gonna clean that up so let's get some isopropanol and I've got a I think I've got a toothbrush here somewhere this way I can inspect it again and make sure that there's no bridges here and make sure that every every a pin is properly soldered down. I'm just going to put some more rosin on there and we're going to go over it one more time just to make sure that the uh, a couple of the pins don't look to be fully attached but we'll uh, get some more solder in there and uh, see if we can get the ones that aren't sticking down to stick properly. Oh god, I got another bridge on this one. That looks okay there. And this side looks okay over here. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm just checking each pin to make sure that every pin is properly soldered down. And I'm just doing that by just touching it with the probe and see if I can see any movement. And of course I'm also looking to see if I can see any shorts between any of the pins. And so far I haven't found any, but I have found a few that weren't soldered down and I've gone back and I've made sure that they are tacked down. To say that this is a tedious job is an understatement. Micro soldering is not for the faint of heart. Because it is, it, it takes great skill and a lot of patience and a lot of double and triple checking to 
to make sure that every single pin is in fact soldered down to the board and that there are no shorts between any of them. Okay, I've now confirmed that all the pins are actually soldered down. And now, now comes the critical part. I'm going to be really giving it a close inspection to make sure that there are no uh, bridges. And uh, then we'll put the board back in and test it. Okay, I'm just going to reattach the board here. I have to get myself a new piece of heat shrink or conductive, uh, <laughs> heat conductive uh, material as when I was using my air compressor to blow the the blow dry the the high C I seem to have blown away the piece of uh, of uh, silicon heat transfer so I got to try and find it here before I connect this thing up I just noticed that I just got the uh, tab connectors reconnected here and we're going to reconnect the uh, LVDS connector to the bottom uh, I have to find some heat conductive material I have some more I'm just going to look for the original piece if not I'll dig up some fresh stuff okay I've got some fresh heat sink gel put that on there we're going to close down the back of the lvds cover which is the heat sink and we'll attach a few screws on here and then we're going to uh i'm getting excited is this going to fix this tv that i don't know but we'll find out pretty quick this TV given to me so I'm really interested to see whether whether my diagnostic skills actually paid off but I'm pretty sure that that was the problem with this thing just the way that that chip was getting hot and when it when it changed when it was all negative right and it changed when I um, when I hit it with cold spray everything changed okay moment of truth power cord um, let's hook up a cable and see whether it does anything okay the moment of truth I've got it hooked up to antenna now uh, power I think it's got power yeah it should have power are we gonna get a picture or not uh, hey all right I fixed it yes got it got it going let's check it out with HDMI This is my Blu-ray player. No, oh, maybe it's not playing. Fantastic. Thumbs up, guys. Thumbs up. And any of you guys that give me a thumbs down, fuck you. We'll catch you in the next video. Total cost of that part, $1.68. Okay? Buck sixty-eight for that part. Why spend a hundred bucks on a on, on a, a T-Con board? Fix it. Now you know how to do it. Yes, you have to brush up on your soldering skills, but you don't need anything other than a soldering iron and a really good magnifying glass and a lot of patience. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.